one of the most important things to remember during this stage in the procedure is that you are now responsible for the patient's graft. When the attending is about to finish the harvest, make sure that you have a hand on the graft at all times and tell him that you securely have a firm grasp on the graft so that there's no confusion and it doesn't accidentally get dropped. Once the harvesting is complete, you move the graft to a separate table and that is where you prepare it. Once you have the graft on the back table, you want to always have a firm grip on it and I start with the tibial side. First you start by laying it on the back table and I start with the patellar bone plug which ends up going into the tibia. It's a little bit more triangular. You make sure that it fits into whatever tunnel size you have decided on with the attending. Generally it's a 10. I like to use a ranger to remove any excess bone or use Metzenbaum scissors and trim it so that it can fit perfectly into the 10 millimeter sizer. The objective is to make each bone plug fit perfectly into whatever size tunnel the attending is reaming into the femur and the tibia. It cannot be too loose and it, obviously it can't be too large or the graft will not pass. Next, I use a drill to drill three holes in the bone plug and then use Keith needles to pass five Ethabon sutures through each drill hole, which aids in passing the graft. You just want to evenly space the drill holes and I go at somewhat of an oblique angle so that when the attending is putting in the tibial hardware, it doesn't catch each of the sutures. So you want one side of the bone plug to have a little bit more bone. So once the patellar plug is finished, I always make sure that I clamp the ethabon sutures to the drapes so that the graft is secured. Sometimes it gets a little slippery. If I'm using the saw, I want to make sure that it's not going to fall. Next, I start the femoral bone plug, which is harvested from the tibia. So basically the orientation of the graft is flipped upside down from the way that it was harvested. The main reason for flipping the graft is, so, is because the tibial plug actually has a little extra step off at the very proximal end, which makes graft fixation easier with whatever screw the surgeon prefers to use. So for this plug, I use the ranger, the scissors, and sometimes the saw to trim down the plug to make sure that it fits perfectly into the 10 millimeter bone block. And then again, I drill three holes equidistant apart and pass five at the bond sutures through each with a Keith needle. Use your best judgment if the bone plug is kind of thin or the bone is in excellent quality you may just want to put two drill holes in so that you don't compromise the bone plug and it doesn't snap. If you're uncertain at any point, just report it to the surgeon. I make sure that I really bullet the end because this is the side that's passing through the knee and you do not want any sharp edges to hold up graft passage within the knee because it can be really frustrating for the surgeon when you're passing the graft. Lastly, you want to try to pass the graft through a 10 millimeter cylinder and see that it passes smoothly and you want the graft to fit perfectly into the femoral tunnel, almost like a press fit. So it's really important to take off only a tiny bit of bone and tendon at a, at a time so that you don't make it too skinny. You do not want any loose space because it won't allow for adequate fixation in the femur. And then I measure it and mark it. So once the graft fits perfectly into the 10 millimeter tunnels, you just want to use a marking pen to mark that little area of step off that I was discussing so that the surgeon can see it when the graft is intraarticular. I also mark where the sutures are on the bone so that it helps with orientation when it's inside the knee because everything looks the same color. Before you start prepping the graft, check with the surgeon to see what dimensions he wants for each bone plug. Typically we do a 10 millimeter diameter in both the tibia and the femur. 
The length is usually 20 millimeters, unless the patient is very short. Then sometimes we'll use an 18 millimeter bone plug in the femur. It's important to mark down the measurements of the graft. I always write four measurements, the tibial plug length, the femoral plug length, the collagen length, and the overall graft length, including both bone plugs. It's usually gonna be anywhere between 80 to 100. If it's short and the patient is rather tall, definitely tell the attending so that they know because we may have to make adjustments in our tunnel length. Once the graft is finished, you place it in a moist lap and put it in a kidney basin wrapped up in a Ziploc bag and clamp it to the table so that it doesn't accidentally get knocked off and let the surgeon know that it's ready.